Hi, it's Chris Watkin here, and I'm here today to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about in terms of your letting agency and getting the landlords and vendors that you deserve using a technique called content marketing. Content marketing is a different way of marketing your agency that I absolutely guarantee you works if you adopt the system. Content marketing was actually um, invented um, hundreds of years ago by the Victorians, and some even say you could go back the Bible's content marketing, um, all religious texts, even the caveman paintings. What I mean by that is this. <coughs> you, marketing, the word marketing means you're trying to persuade somebody else to do something else, whether that's buy your product, um, whether that's to vote for you, whether that's to uh, give you money to your charity. And it's all about getting the attention and the engagement of people so they actually listen to what you have to say, engage with you, learn to trust you, and people do business with people they trust. If you go back to the 1950s and 60s, what the TV people used to do is that they realised very quickly is that because there was only one or two channels, that if they spent money on advertising, quite blunt advertising, saying buy this product, it'll make you more brilliant and awesome and better than your uh, neighbours. What happened is people bought more of that product because their attention, their focus was on that TV. There was no mobile phones, there was no distractions. So what that happened is more people bought more of the products, which meant they could spend more money on advertising, which means that even more people bought the products. And that worked really well in the 1950s, 60s and 70s. But then what's been happening is that people's distractions uh, or the number of distractions that people have has been going through the roof in the last 20 years. Originally, it started with TV channels where there wasn't only three or four or five. But when we had the satellites on, we got even more. And now there's thousands of TV channels. But if you actually think about it, if you want to sell something, you have to go where the eyeballs of the punters are. And... The magic thing is, is that people's eyeballs today are not on TV adverts. They're not even on um, Google Adwer Google, you know, we, we're, we've trained ourselves to ignore adverts. So what's been happening? Well, in fact, the, hum the average British human being sees, on average, 2,000 adverts a day. And I bet you a pound to a penny, you've seen 2,000 today. But you won't have remembered any. You see, we've trained ourselves to ignore Google adverts, back of bus adverts, newspaper adverts. And when the telly comes on, all of us are very guilty of fast forwarding the adverts. And if we, even if we can't fast forward the adverts, the thing we do is we pick up our mobile phones. You see, you as a human being are ignoring adverts. But then as soon as you put your estate agent or letting agent hat on, what happens is that you, you tend to turn into a different person and think that someone's going to see your advert. Now, this is going to smart quite a lot, but if you don't mind me saying, if you're going to spend money on advertising telling people who you are, i.e. brand awareness, that won't work either. You know, there's a lot of agents out there that think, oh, if I just tell enough people about my agency, I will, I will win. Well, no, the banks spend millions and millions of pounds on, on advertising about brand awareness, and I bet you a pound to a penny, most of them could actually... Um, you could name straight away, but still you don't swap banks, just like landlords don't swap letting agents. And when it comes to the estate agency, again, the old phrase, board breeds boards. Well, that's true, because what happens is people just choose the first three estate agents that come into their head. So what happens is they ring up the, the three big agents in your town, and then it almost becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. People put their house on the market with one of those, which means six months down the line, there's still loads of for sale boards out there. And then more people ring them on back of those. So if you're a, a young agent trying to break into a market, trying to break that cycle is hard. Now, the, the standard wisdom, especially what the likes of Foxons is, well, let's go in with cheap fees. Well, let me tell you a story of an agent that spent 13 grand advertising well, cheap as chips at fees. Um, I think if memory says him well, £39 a month to manage your property and spent, as I said, absolutely shed loads of money on that. Um, and at the end of it, 
Because what he did is on the front page of the Derby Telegraph, he put an advert, manage your property for 39, uh, for 39 quid. Then on page two, there was another advert, page four, page six, page eight, and all the way through to the back end of the estate agency pages where there was a half page saying, I will manage your property for £39 a month. And, and quite frankly, after spending all that money, he got four landlords back. Now, you estate agents, you think if you tell enough people about your estate agency, people will come to you. But it's just like the banks. You might say, well, what my job is to create a competitive advantage, to tell people that I'm better than everyone else. Let me tell you this. No one cares. 99.99% of people who are looking to sell a house today, uh, sorry, not, uh, not who are not looking to sell a house, who will be selling in one year, two years, five years, ten years. Don't give a flying monkeys about you and your agency. What we need to do is get the name of our agency inside their head six, 12, 18 months before they need us. So when they do need us, they automatically think of us. And when it comes to uh, you letting agents, every letting agent tells me, if you can just get the landlord to come and talk to me, I will be able to build a relationship and get their business. So I bang on about a, a technique called landlord and vendor farming. And landlord and vendor farming is just content marketing for estate agents and letting agents. You see, like I said, your customers don't care about you, your services. They only care about themselves, their wants and their needs. Content marketing is about creating an interesting information that your customers are passionate about so they actually pay attention to you. You see, that's the magic thing. How can you how can you grab the attention of people? Well, basically, content marketing is the art of communicating with your customers and prospects without actually trying to sell them anything. You don't interrupt them. You don't ruin their day with crappy adverts. Instead of pitching your state letting agency services, you're delivering compelling and interesting information that makes your buyers more intelligent or perhaps entertains them. The essence of this strategy is the belief that if we as estate agents deliver consistent, ongoing, valuable information to buyers, they ultimately will reward us with their business. Now, don't get me wrong. There is time for a little bit of sales collateral, features and benefit marketing, and customer testimonials about why you are so effing awesome. But if you're like most companies, you have plenty of content. The problem with that type of content is it's critical about when the seller wants to sell their property now. And that's the problem. You're all creating content saying, if you're about to put your house on the market, come and use me. If you're about to put your house, come and use me. And you're getting lost. What you need to do is create content where they don't need you now, but they will need you in a year, two years time. So when they do come round to selling their house in a year or two years time, you are the only agent in town. So, what I'd like to do is talk about this content marketing technique in a lot more detail, and we'll take it from there. Thank you very much. Okay, so what we've got here is the structured system of content marketing for estate agents and letting agents. And the analogy that I would like you to use is if you can see these two horizontal lines, those are a riverbank with the, in the centre being the river. And what you as an agent are doing is shouting from your side of the riverbank over to their side of the riverbank to the homeowners. Hey, if you're thinking of selling your house, come and use us. We're brilliant. The problem is everyone else on that riverbank is doing exactly the same. The problem is, on the other side, probably only half of 1%, if that, of homeowners are looking to put their house on the market in the next one or two months. So if you think about it, 99.95% or percent of your messages, it's like seed being thrown out onto, not onto earth, but onto stone. It's not being accepted. It's not being read. No one cares about you or your agency. Landlords... They're slightly different. They do have business to give you straight away. The problem is, is that you don't know where they live. So how do you get in front of those landlords and, and actually learn, you know, get them to listen to what you have to say? Now, thankfully, if you think about it, 100% of homeowners live in the home they live in, which means they live in your patch. 
Landlords, unless you are in absolute central London, your Marley Bones and your Park Lanes of this world, you know, so the suburbs of London, absolutely fine. The vast majority of landlords live in the same area they buy in. Why? Because people buy what they know and therefore they buy local. So if you think about it, 100% of your homeowner customers, your estate customers, live in your town, whilst probably 50 to 60 to 70%, depending on where you are, of landlords also live in the town. But they're going to be living more middle, upper class areas. The average demographic of a homeowner is anywhere between 30 and 80. Whilst a landlord will probably be 40 upwards and more middle class, as opposed to, um, as opposed to lower to middle class because landlords tend to be of that demographic. What you need to do is grab their attention and create such compelling information that people will listen to what you have to say and engage with you. Like I say, nobody cares about you or your agency. They only care about themselves and their property. And I'll prove it to you. Tonight, if there was a brand new for sale board that was there that wasn't there this morning, I guarantee you everyone would get out before they got out of the car, would go and have a look on right move to see what that property was worth. Why? Because that's a direct relationship to what theirs is worth. But they wouldn't do that if the property was half a mile down the road. My intuition tells me that if you want to grab the attention of landlords and homeowners, you have to talk about stuff that they are interested in, not what you're interested in. And they're interested in what's happening to my house. What is the value of my house? What will Brexit do to my house? Nobody gives a flying F about anyone else. They only care about themselves. I don't say that in a nasty way, but it's true. So what I'm advocating is that you talk about the local property market to local people. Because if you talk about the local property market to local people, you are going to become interesting, aren't you? Now, some agents say, well, yeah, I like this content marketing, Lark, Chris. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about my knowledge of Section 8 or Section 21 notices and, which, what, and what you should do to look, top tips for what to look for in an agent and things like that. Guys, that is boring as hell. What if a solicitor started doing a post saying someone's someone's have you crashed your car should you use which type of law should you use should you use tort law or should you use negligence law people don't care that's what they pay a solicitor for and that's what they pay us for all they care about is getting their rent and getting it on time and and dealing with someone they can trust and a homeowner they don't care about as estate agents all they care about is they've made the decision they want to get a decent price for their property so they can move on with the next chapter of their life. They don't care about you or your agency. I know that sounds tough, but it's true. You don't care about the local solicitors, accountants or architects practice. So why should anyone care about you? So if you are of the opinion that people are interested in the local property market, what you need to do is work out a way on how to get hold of those people. So what we've done is let's come back to our river with the river banks here. And what we're going to do is build a series of stepping stones in this river that enables our information to be put in front of landlords and homeowners locally. And the first one here is newspaper. So let's go and have a look at that. The traditional way of doing newspaper advertising is to put blocks and blocks of properties. But if you think about it, that's what right moves there for. If you look at this, this agent here takes half a page of the newspaper and actually, instead of putting properties in it, puts in an article that makes him appear to be the local property expert. Purple Bricks coined that phrase. If I go onto most of your websites, they all say, we're a local property expert. We know the local property market. We're brilliant. And if you look at all the surveys, those wonderful ones that the Property Academy do, the, one of the very biggest, if not the biggest thing that people bay, choose a, a state a letting agent on is, is the one that knows the market. So we all say we know the market, but none of us prove it. This proves it. By taking half a page in the newspaper and making it look like newspaper print, you will appear to be the local property expert. In fact, some of my clients have even got the newspaper editor to put it in for free. Now, if you're going to go down that route and, and write some articles, the advice to you is as follows. Top tip here. 
is don't ring them up and say, I'm going to do some articles for you. What you have to do is write them. And what you do is you work out who the solicitor, sorry, no, who the editor is and who the deputy editor is. And most newspapers are weekly. So what you're going to do is you're going to post it on the day before the newspaper comes out, which means they will they will get it on the day the newspaper does come out, which means they've got a full week to fill a paper. You're going to do it in a handwritten envelope with a stamp. No, none of this um, franking lark. And it's handwritten with a post-it note that goes something on the lines of Dear Jim, if Jim's the editor, um, as you are the editor of the XYZ local newspaper, I thought you might be interested, as I'm sure your um, readers are, in the current state of play with the leave space of name of town property market. Feel free to use it as you as you see right. What you can then do is two days later, email that to him or her, because then you can just say, following my letter, I here is another copy, electronic copy, for you to use as you see fit. And then what you then do is you do that with the editor and the deputy editor. And if there's any big news reporters as well, have a look through the newspaper and keep going. Now, some newspaper editors break at a, around three or four weeks. Some take quite a few months. But you drip, 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 drip. And what happens is, is eventually they will, the poo will hit the fan and they will be able to use your article to fill a space. You then get all your mates to send tweets and everything, saying that's the most wonderful thing in the world to, uh, that we saw. And um, you just keep dripping it, and eventually you'll get half a page for free. Can't guarantee it, but the chances are pretty damn good. Okay, so that's your newspapers. I, uh, as I said, you don't have to pay for it. Another type of marketing is newsletters. Now, if you think about it, most newsletters are... Uh, sorry, most flyers are, hi, we're an estate agent and these are all the bullet points on what makes us awesome. And like I say, no one cares. So, if you are going to go down the newsletter approach, what you could do is the same article that went into your newspaper could go into your newsletter. But what we found over the years is, is that we do need to actually bring in a little bit of commercialism here. So what we've done here is we've perfected this. This is what I consider is an exceptional newsletter. Ideal for estate agents and letting agents. It's an A5 folded, sorry, A4 folded into A5. And what you've got here is the A5 part fronted with a property that has sold. It's deliberately a posh end property. Then on the inside is an article which talks about how affordable property is in Wigan. This is a pro this is an article that's been ghostwritten for this particular agent, Alan Batt. And it goes into an awful lot of detail talking about the local property market in um, a huge amount of depth. Down the right hand side, again, a few more properties that have sold. Notice that they're all in roughly the same sort of price range. And then on the back, another property that's sold. What this is, is, it, is that this kills many birds with one stone. You can use this on your residential sales. And what it does is this. If you just put properties that you've sold, people go, so what? But if you put property, but if by doing properties that you've sold, but also doing a gutsy article on the property market, the inside part is absolutely ideal for people who are not looking to sell, but are looking to have a read of what's happening. Whilst the outside parts show the people that are selling that you are selling properties. But this is where the magic happens. It's the combination of the both that work. And Alan Batt says he's absolutely steaming it, nicking stuff off other agents' properties, especially at the upper end. Because what he's saying is, people are saying, you're obviously selling stuff like ours, i.e. posh end stuff, but at the same time, you know what you're talking about. And that's the thing. This is the Trojan horse. This is the stuff that people are interested in, but it's surrounded by stuff you're selling. So if you wanted to target three-bedroom semis, all you would do is put the same article on the inside, but the properties that you'd sold 
would all be three bedroom semis. And if you were going for four bedroom family of David Wilson boxes, that's all you'd put in. David Wilson four bed boxes. Hell, you could even target a housing estate and just talk about stuff on that housing estate. So put the housing estate leaflet because you can do short runs on printing. Solar print do runs of 25, 50, um, 100, um, quite reasonably priced. And this enables you to uh, to show that you're selling stuff either in that ge geography or that um, price range. And this, quite simply, is the very best newsletter, which kills two stones, kill, kills two birds with one stone. Um, if you were just lettings, I and uh, you, what, what a lot of people do is they have an article on the front and an article on the back. And what I will do in the... Uh, uh, notes, I'll just get a note now. In the course notes, we'll supply you a link which will enable you to look at all the examples of what good newsletters look like. You'll notice in them that we don't go heavy on the branding or the logos. Um, it, it's all about um, giving information without a hard sell. Next up, using the portals. Now, what I would recommend here is this is. My recommendation, if you're already halfway through a 12-month package on Rightmove where you have to spend adverts, <clears throat> if you're about to renegotiate, my personal opinion is that Rightmove adverts are a waste of money. But if you're spending halfway through Rightmove, don't care where you spend it as long as you spend it. What I'm going to recommend there is that you put featured agent adverts only in the sales part, which say something along the lines of, are you interested in the Grantham property market? Come to, click here to find out what's happening to space, leave space for name of town property market prices. But let's move on to the big one and that's social media. Okay, so LinkedIn is a fantastic way to build up connections. If you think about it with social media, is that you have to be connected up with someone for them to read your stuff on their wall or their newsfeed. So the best way to do that is you already will have a number of connections on your fate uh, that you're connected up with on LinkedIn. So find this works and um, again you can target competitors on this as well. So find people that you know are really ensconced in your locality. So let's assume that I was an agent in Brighton. I and Chris Sanderson's here. I could click on his profile here and I could go to see connections. I'll do that now. Now these are going to be all over the place. But if I am a um, a Brighton agent, I could type in the word Brighton here and I bet you a pound to a penny that he's connected up with quite a few people in the Brighton area. Some of these are first connections, some of them will be second connections. So let's go and find out some second connections. We'll undo that there. Here we go. And here we are. I could connect up with people who are based in the Brighton area that this person who's a direct competitor or a mover and a shaker like a solicitor, an accountant, or an architect, or a bank manager. And these are the people that you need to be connecting up with. Because when you start chucking your content out, it works really well. And you just press on the word connect. You could add a note if you wanted to. And here, what I tend to do is type in the word, let's say it's Stephen, Stephen, and then do a standard. As we are both connected in Brighton, uh, sorry, as we are both based in the Brighton area and have mutual many mutual connections on LinkedIn, I thought it'd be interesting for us to connect up. Kind regards, Chris Watkin. Then I would cut and paste everything apart from their Christian name, copy it, move down to the next person and just go connect and type in the word Callum and then the, 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 the other message and just rinse and repeat. And what you're doing on LinkedIn is connecting up with all like friends of friends. This is really important because on LinkedIn, people don't share that much. So it's really important to build up your connection database. I warn you in advance, this is boring as hell. But it's an important way to get your connections up. And more connections means more people will read your stuff. Next is Facebook. Now, Again, with Facebook, 
A lot of you get really het up trying to spend lots of money on Facebook advertising um, and also your likes. I'm going to tell you here and now that's just a vanity metric. What I want you to do is this. I want you to search for all the the um, groups that are in your town. So I'm going to type in the word Grantham because I'm from Grantham. And I'm going to click on that and here are some Grantham groups. Okay. Grantham mums. I'm going to click on that. Now, I, I could join the group here. So this group is not for selling. That's fine. Let's go and find another group that I am in. Here we are, Grantham Civic Society. What I then do is move over to the members. And slowly but surely, methodically, click Add Friend on all the people who are in this Grantham group. Why will I do that? Because the only people that will join a Grantham group are people who live in Grantham. Makes sense, doesn't it? It's a boring as hell to do, but it, what it does is it builds up your personal connections on Facebook. Should you be doing this as a person or should you be doing this as a company? My, You can do whatever the hell you like. You're going to get a better response, mind you, a much better response if you send it as a person. But if you're the sort of person that has drunken nights out and puts them all on Facebook, maybe you don't want to mix business with pleasure. But if you're like me and you use Facebook for both business and pleasure, set yourself a thing that if anyone ever tags you on a photograph, you have to give permission so you don't, so again, they don't get creep out at three o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> and it will enable you to, to filter any rubbish out, but it will also enable you to start pushing stuff out. Because the whole thing about Facebook is putting content in front of the people. Now you could spend money doing Facebook advertising. And quite frankly, there is some merit in that. The two people I recommend for Facebook advertising are Chris Kiriakou and Paul Long. If you're quite uh, a hands-on sort of person um, and want to do it all yourself, speak with Chris Kiriakou at eaanalytics.co.uk. But if you need your hand-holding, definitely speak with Paul Long and he is absolutely wonderful and hold your hand all the way through Facebook advertising. He is the king. Quite simply... I haven't seen anyone in the UK do any better than him. How often should you post? Here's some huge tips for you posting. You'll see here that this gentleman here has a picture of some newspapers. And as we scroll down, you'll see that your job is all about getting your, your, your face seen. So what I would recommend you do is if you want to double click, double your click through rates, do your article here. But on your photograph, take a photograph of a road sign. Let's just go and get one now. You'd obviously have taken one yourself. So here we are. There's one there. Obviously, be, be aware of, um, what's it called? Uh, copyright issues. But no worries on that one. And put your photograph on there. And what you'll find... This is huge, huge tip for you guys. Let's just go and find Grant from Property Blog. Okay, so we've got the picture there. Always put the picture in first. Huge tip. If you're going to put URL in afterwards, do the URL after the, the image. That's really important because otherwise then you don't get that horrible little um, thumbnail. So find out what is happening in the Grantham property market. Put a link in there and then share it. And then you will see that what happens is, is that when people are scrolling through, instead of seeing a picture of a few newspapers, they'll see that sign. I live there and it will stop. Your job is to grab their attention. Then make them read. So you'll notice that all of the red stepping stones have got blue lines coming off them, all telling people to come and talk to you. And that's important to give them a, um, a direction, a call to action. But the vast majority of them will not be ready to come and talk to you. So therefore, you're going to set up a property blog about your town called whatever your town's property blog is called. The best one out there at the moment is Chelmsford Property Blog. This is the Chelmsford Property Blog. 
and it talks about what's happening in the Chelmsford property market with a write-up of who they are and some great photographs. And then the articles themselves talking about what is exactly is happening in the Chelmsford property market. Here's a particular article here, the top 25 most saleable streets locally. And as you can see, it's got lots of graphs and details there which show they know what the hell they're talking about. What you do is you keep chucking the articles out on newspapers, newsletters, social media, spending 15, 20 minutes a day. And I guarantee you, you will succeed with one proviso. You won't get any business whatsoever for at least nine months. You could say, nine months is a long time. And I will say to you, yes, it is. But every single business person you know, every single artist that you know, has got there through grit and determination, playing the long game and being patient. You can't buy trust. You can't buy engagement. But what you can do is provide decent content which people want to read and listen to. And that is what it's all about. Create content and put it out there and you will win. However, the most important thing is, if you are going to create that content, you need to know how to create that content. So, in the next section of the video, I'm going to give you a link for over 20 articles that you can use on a, and recycle. But all you have to do is drop the numbers and we're going to pick one at random. And what we are then going to do is create the article in front of you and, and show you how to do it. Okay, so... With regard to the article writing, you have two choices. The first one is having them ghostwritten for you. Now, I am a ghostwriter, along with two other people in the UK that do that. But just because you can't afford my articles, or the fact that I already work for an agent in your town, shouldn't preclude you from writing your own articles. So I'm happy to give you, free of charge, 20 templated articles which go through the core of the sort of things that you should be writing. Each article is a template which you can rotate every 20 weeks and they can change every 20 weeks to enable you to create content which doesn't appear to repeat itself. The art with content is to not just say what's happening, not to data dump, but to compare and contrast one area against another, one type of property against another, two bedrooms versus three bedrooms. The art is not to give the answers, but make suggestions. One of the things that you're going to say is, if I write these articles, will people ever challenge me? And yes, they will. Probably every once every couple of months. But as long as you write down where your statistics come from, you would be able to come back to them and say, this is what Zoopla said, this is what Rightmove said. And therefore, I will provide a link to you for the 20 or so articles that you can use as templates. And let's go and have a look at them now with the links that you'll be able to see and actually let's do an article about it. Okay, so we'll provide you this link and you can see that it has all the articles that you need. And in fact, I think there's 22 articles there for you. I'm going to choose one at random, this one here, let's say that, which is town outperforms other town by 23%. So let's have a look at this particular article. Now I'm going to stress to you that you can, if you want to, bulk it out by putting a little bit of fluff at the start and a little bit of fluff at the end. You know, at the start, I was talking to a landlord the other day who was considering buying between the town of Newtown and Middletown. So your, your new town is probably your town, and Middletown is the other area. You'll notice it says here, Castle Bytham. Ideally, to make it more reasonable and more truthful, choose a village that is halfway between the two towns. And then it's a case of putting these figures in. We need to find out the average value of a property, and the rent, and from that we can work out the yield. So let me show you how to do that. The first thing is to go to Zoopla. Now we're on Zoopla, we press on house prices and values, and we type in the word 
I'm going to use the word Grantham and search. And when you look at the articles I send you, the link, in the red section above the notes, it tells you exactly where these stats come from. So, the average value of a property in this town here is in this box here, which is 221,488. And the values have gone up by 2.35% in the last 12 months. Let's make it more interesting, and let's go for five years. So the values in Grantham have gone up by 29.89%, and the current value is 221. So if you actually think about it, you could still actually work out what the average, what property values have gone up by. Because if you take 221 and take away 50,962, you'd get a figure of around 172. And that is what the average value of a property was five years ago. So in the article, you could say five years ago, the average value of a property in Grantham was £172,000. And today it's gone up to 221,488 an increase of 50,900, or a percentage of 29.89. What we then do is we go to a neighbouring town. So I'm going to click on the word Sleaford. It doesn't matter what you choose. And the average value of a property in Sleaford, here, current average value, is 199,800. I change that to the last five years. And the values have gone up by 24.43%. Let's just have a quick look to what they were back in Grantham, 29. So immediately we have, we could, again, we could work out what values have gone up by. Take that figure there away from that figure. That brings it into roughly 160. So we could say Grantham's gone up by £50,000 from 172 to 220, roughly. Whilst in Sleaford, they've gone up from 160 to 199,800, a growth of 24%. But then the article talked about rents. How do we find the rents? Click on house prices, and, the, and you'll see a little drop down menu appears. And you click on Sleaford Area Stats. And it tells you, but on this graph, current asking prices, current asking rents. And the average rent here is £560. We can type in the word Grantham and get the same figure. You can see here that the average rent is 612. And therefore, to work out the yield, all we have to do is times the, the rent by 12 to get an annual figure, and then divide it by the total capital value to get a percentage yield. And that is how you get the stats for that particular article. It really doesn't matter whether your town has done better than the next town. The art is just to tell the figures. If your town hasn't done better than the next town, you could put into the article, of course, this is what's happened in the last five years, but quite often, anecdotal evidence suggests that our town catches up with the other town over the medium to long term. Anecdotal means that you're covered. And therefore, the art is not to basically put everything in rose-tinted glasses and perfect all the time. The art is just to tell the story, and the art is compare and contrast. This is what's happened in this town, and this is what's happened in that town. This is what's happened to rents, this is what's happened to rents in the second town. This is what yields are. And all of you reading this and listening to this, whether the property, your town has done better, that's great news. If your town hasn't done so well, you can imply that this is a golden opportunity to buy as the town, as I said, so, um, normally catches up with the other towns. No one's going to challenge you on that anecdotal evidence because you put the word anecdotal, which means there's no actual proof. And the, and the art here is just to tell the story. And by telling the story, you will win. So if you're on a 20-week rotation, the next time this, come, this article comes around, you could do it on a different town. And that's the art. These 20 can be rotated every 20 weeks or so. And by telling the story and putting it out on LinkedIn and, and uh, Facebook, potentially putting it out on newsletters and newspapers, you will win. But I will say to you here and now, you will only win in the medium to long term. 
We, as a society, are very guilty of wanting everything now. I guarantee you this system works, but you will not get any business for 9 to 12 months. So the question is, do you have the patience? Because I guarantee you, most of you will not start this because you will say, well, I haven't got enough time. And those of you that do start will probably give up at month four or five because you put maximum effort with little or no return. But I'm going to say to you here and now, if you, you know, if you adopt these principles of talking about the local property market and then doing great buy to let deals, which I will, again, I will show you some examples of what good looks like, I guarantee you, you will win. The question is, do you have the patience? So next up, let's go and look at what good looks like when it comes to video content. Okay guys, so we're here today to look at the sort of kit that you as a letting or estate agent need to, to enable you to do some videos. So the first thing you need to do is spend thousands of thousands of pounds. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 don't. No, we don't. No? No. We're going to talk you through something that for under 100 quid, probably near 80 pounds, but definitely under 100 pounds, depending on the models you choose, you can get set up and start shooting your own video today, this afternoon. Get on Amazon, be delivered by tomorrow. Okay, so obviously your phone isn't something that you're going to have for under 100 pounds. But as we all know, everyone's got one of these handy little gizmos in their pocket. So you've already got, hopefully, one of these. You might even be watching this video on your phone. Absolutely. Good so stuff. as long as you've got one of these, you can make some cool video. Yeah. Good. Now, golden rule, steady. No one likes, unless you're watching Blair Witch Project or something like that. Or like an action that. movie. I didn't or like that film. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I don't like stuff like that. Scary. Too scary. But you want something steady. And plus, if you're out in the field on your own and it's just you, obviously, you want to stand up your camera and you want to stand in front of it, start talking, not worry about this handheld shaky thing going on. So. Chris, how much would a tripod be? Well, I mean, that one's, you know, a professional model, but you can pick them up for as little as £25, maybe £30. Amazon, Wex, online, phenomenal camera supplier. Yes, yeah. Um, you know, and um, yeah, you can be steady for under 30 quid. But Chris, I, I, I can't seem to, it doesn't seem to stick on the, on no, the, well, so, so what, of course what it won't. do it do? But, you know, these things are super cheap. This is a little camera bracket. We don't use the word cheap, we use the word inexpensive. inexpensive. Um, so this little inexpensive gizmo uh, has got a little foot on the bottom that attaches just to the to the top of your tripod. Just screw that bad boy in, and he's only a fiver, and that will give you a nice landscape uh, photo, uh, photo or video um, straight away. Just screw straight in. So so far, thirty. Thirty-five pounds. Good stuff. Bargain. Okay, so so um, sometimes we've got these things called a selfie stick, whatever one of these is. Um, so so talk to me through about this because this looks a really expensive model. You could have spend more than two quid on that one. Chris. Uh, no, this is about another fiver, <laughs> maybe a tenner if you buy a good wow, one. Wow. Um, I know, right? <laughs> uh, effectively, effectively, your mobile tripod. So yeah. it's exactly the same principle um, as this little chap with the foot. Just clip them in the front and you're good to go. Um, obviously, you have to think about positioning, um, your height, uh, and everything else. We're going to do a video we'll on that. We'll do some stuff yeah. about that later on. Later. This, this is okay. just kit. This good is stuff. just getting you set and ready to go. Okay, so do you use the microphone that's in the camera, uh, sorry, in the phone, to, to, to record? You can. You can. You can. But... This little puppy is 10 pounds. 10 quid. That one's a uh, Amazon special. Um, obviously not professional grade, but it will give you quite good sound. Now it's good, important to mention, you know, sound is crucial. We're gonna talk in more detail about sound and, and the value of sound uh, in a later video, but, but sound really, really important. Um, and this is gonna massively improve your sound. Massively. For a tenor. For Gents, a tenor. you're gonna be wearing a suit or a tie. Ladies, maybe wearing a scarf or a tie to work. Depends how you dress, but easy peasy. This pops into the bottom of your phone. Et voila, easy peasy. Uh, then, but, but some of some of our some of our viewers here have got iPhone sevens, so, okay, you know, so, so you're not going to be able to have be able no, to plug this in. Now you've got this one here. I think it's this one here, isn't it? Oh, we can plug that in, yeah. Good stuff. So if you've got an iPhone seven, it comes with a little adapter thing that you plug into the bottom of your iPhone, and then you plug in your headphones 
that way. Again, on a later video, we'll do some nice tight close-ups and show you how it works and why it works. What have you got in your hand there? Because to be honest with you, um, there's an awful lot of people out there that are using microphones. They plug it into their phone and it doesn't work. So what's the score on that one then? And why the hell should they need to spend money on one of these? Well, they look similar, don't they? But they do. if you look very carefully, and again, we'll do some close-up shots in when we do the microphone video, but one's got two rings on and one's got three rings on. And basically, if you put that two ring into a phone, it won't work. It, won't it needs work. to go into a three ring. Right. So you need this adapter and uh, on the screen now is what it's called. I think it's called a TRS to a TRRS yes. or something. Yeah, something technical. So, something technical, I can't be doing with technical. But how much was this? Three, four quid Three, from, four Am quid. from Amazon, Movers Union. So, 25-ish, tenner. Thirty-five, another tenner, 45. FOC these, from three, Apple, unless you've thrown it away. Three or four quid, another fiver. That is your kit for 100 pounds. Excellent. Good to go. Good stuff. So now what we need to know is how to film and uh, put a bit more detail. So let's go for the next video now, chaps. Eh? Okay, Great. see you in the next see you episode. Later. Cheers, Thanks, guys. See Hi, it's Chris Watkin here from Landlord Farming with my very good friends Chris and Matt from Property Video Solutions and in this short video we want to talk about the importance of actually using a microphone on your mobile phone when you're filming. So at the moment I'm filming actually using a Lavelio microphone and, it, and the audio is absolutely fantastic. Let's now try it where we unplug it from the mobile phone. So Matt if you could kill the... Uh... And now the microphone has been unplugged from the phone and you can tell that the audio is absolutely appalling. It's really, really important that audio is, just makes or breaks a video and therefore what it's important to do is... Just plug your mic in guys. That's all you need to do. Good to see you guys. Thanks very much. See you next week. Thank you. Hi, welcome back to Property Video Solutions and to our studios in Grantham. I'm Chris and today we're going to talk to you about wind. So when you're recording your videos for your letting or estate agency, a lot of the time you'll be outside and wind is a real problem and can really diminish the quality of your production purely in the audio. So what we're going to do today is talk about a really important bit of kit. This is a wind muffler. So really inexpensive and what it will do just clip on the top of your lapel mic which we spoke about in other videos as being super important and uh, what we're going to do is show you what wind does to your sound so we've got a little standing guest today we've not seen him for a while so uh, mr watkin is back uh, and as we know uh, mr watkin uh, <laughs> he's he has now got a bit of wind so chances are you'll not be able to hear anything that I'm saying because the wind's going to be effectively totally killing all of the sound. So what's really terrible is this scratchy, horrible audio that you're going to get. Now what we're going to do is just pop this little chap on the top of my microphone and almost instantly that sound quality will improve. So the sound's still here. You can see the wind going through the back, through all of the curtains that we put in just to show uh, that we've got some audio uh, and some wind so you should still be able to hear even with a really strong wind and I can be talking almost into the wind and you're still going to get nice clean sound so thanks very much for watching buy yourself a cheeky wind muffler for not a lot of, not a lot of money and uh, your audio will improve Hi, welcome back to the Property Video Solutions Studios. Uh, thank you for joining us again. Today we're going to talk to you about stability. In one of our previous videos we spoke about equipment and today what we want to do is just talk about how you can make your shots more stable. So when we're talking about equipment we talked about a tripod option or a, or a selfie stick option. So selfie stick, very straightforward, straight out like so. Pop your phone in if I can find one. Straight in the bracket at the top and you're good to go making sure of course that your eye line's nice and level and that your thirds are 
suitable. Second option, without a selfie stick, he says, when you can find his bit of equipment, lots of pockets, uh, is your tripod. So, same thing, you're just effectively putting a selfie stick bracket on top of your tripod um, so that it's suitable um, to accept your phone. So once it's nice and tight, take your phone, attach it on, spin it to the position you want, and there you are, and you're ready to shoot again. So stability is really important for making sure that your shots are nice and stable. No one wants a shaky shot in their video and no one wants to watch it. So make sure your shots are nice and stable and your videos will improve. Thanks for watching. Hello, welcome back to the Property Video Solutions Studio. My name's Matt, and uh, on this little segment, we're gonna talk about the humble microphone. So very important. Uh, we've all seen videos, whether it's outside, normally outside, you've got that nasty wind noise. Now, a lot of you guys out there will be filming houses, obviously outside, we wanna eliminate that completely, because good audio will keep your viewers engaged and keep them watching your videos. So, this little microphone, like we said in a previous video, 10 pounds off Amazon. Order it tonight, it'll be here tomorrow, you can start using it. Now, normal microphones that you're gonna be ordering, are it's called a lav mic or a lavelier mic. Um, it's a TRS end, which is the two little black lines. Now, if you're using smartphones to do your filming, you want a TRRS. And basically, all they do is it plugs into the bottom and this goes straight into your phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android. And then you've got your little lav mic here. Now what you want to do is not just clip it to your tie, gents, or your scarf, ladies, because we've got this nasty black wire hanging. All you do is, before you start filming, slip it up your jumper, up the inside of your actual... I've got one on here. Can you see? Very discreet, and but it gives you a great omnidirectional audio. So like I was saying, gentlemen, slip it up one sleeve of your jacket. Ladies, can just come under a blouse and clip onto one of your scarves that you might wear to work. Gents, again, run it up your shirt, out of a buttonhole, clip it onto your tie. Nice and professional, just like the newsreaders. Um, and again, you're going to be kitted up, you've got your phone, and the microphone's going to cost you 10 or 15 pounds. And your audio will be substantially better than using the internal mic in your iPhone. Check back more for more hints and tips from Property Video Solutions. Hi guys, welcome back to uh, the Property Video Solutions Studios here in Grantham. Uh, I'm Chris and today we're going to talk about the rule of thirds. So when you're making your film it's really important that the proportionality of your shots is good, it gives a really nice feel and balance to your imagery and thirds is a really great way of making sure your images remain sharp and interesting. So as you can see here from the grid that's now overlaid on, uh, on top of the screen, I'm sat on one third line which comes straight down the middle and then another one comes straight through almost at my eye line. So it gives a real sense that I'm talking directly to you, my viewer, about whatever it is you're looking to talk to your viewer about. So, and what's really interesting here with this shot is we've got some nice neutral space here uh, where my camera is. So that allows me to pull in some graphics so a wipe can come in and then after wipes come in, we can have some statistics that come overlaid and that can come straight down the side. So nice, clean graphics all the way through. And that will allow us to overlay all this nice information here while we're talking to our viewer about lettings or the local property market. So thanks very much uh, for watching today. Come back again to find out some more information about how to make your video better. And that's, uh, that's it today from Property Video Solutions. Hi, welcome back to the Property Video Solutions Studios. Uh, thank you for joining us again. Today we're going to talk to you about stability. In one of our previous videos we spoke about equipment and today what we want to do is just talk about how you can make your shots more stable. So when we're talking about equipment we talked about a tripod option or a, or a selfie stick option. So selfie stick, very straightforward, straight out like so. Pop your phone in if I can find one, straight in the bracket at the top and you're good to go making sure, of course, that your eye line's nice and level and that your thirds are suitable. 
Second option, without selfie stick, he says, when you can find his bit of equipment, lots of pockets, uh, is your tripod. So same thing, you're just effectively putting a selfie stick bracket on top of your tripod um, so that it's suitable um, to accept your phone. So once it's nice and tight, take your phone, attach it on, spin it to the position you want, and there you are, and you're ready to shoot again. So stability really important for making sure that your shots are nice and stable. No one wants a shaky shot in their video and no one wants to watch it. So make sure your shots are nice and stable and your videos will improve. Thanks for watching. Get it going because I'm going to cut this out, aren't I? I'm going to do that. What I do is I, pos I psych myself up, all right? I think because you think to yourself, I'm talking to a piece of blue tack, I'm talking to a piece of blue tack, and you go like this. Now, some of you will actually think to yourselves, hold on a second, how many times I'm reading something and you can see my eyes reading? Yeah? Depends if you're going to do it, if you're going to write stuff down. If you are going to write stuff down, do use this technique. You just move your hand like this. Hi, it's Chris Watkin here, and if you, sorry, fell from my own trap there, you don't do that, start again. <laughs> if you are a Grantham buy-to-let landlord, and I got a cracking buy-to-let deal for you. I'm just standing outside, it's three bedroom terraced house, it's just come on the market with Connells on Victoria Street for the princely sum of £99,995. It's a three bedroom terrace with two reception rooms, gas centre heating and double glazing. I think this is an absolutely cracking buy-to-let deal for you Grantham landlords because it will sell well, let well, um, the yields are only going in an upward direction and I tell you here and now, this is quite simply the very best buy-to-let deal. Get yourself down to Connells now, go and see Jim, he's absolutely fantastic, he'll sort your viewing out and I'll, I'll see you on Wednesday with the next Chris Watkin buy-to-let deal. Thanks very much.